hi everyone um, in today's video we're going to look at how to debug a an F sharp uh, .NET core application or in fact any .NET core application in VS code right so let's jump right in right um, so first off we start with the uh, .NET new right this shows us all the different types of applications we can build because we want a console F sharp application what we can now do is to say .NET new uh, console, right? We specify the language as F sharp, and we specify the output as learn console, right? So what this will do is it will initialize the project and create a folder called learn console, and you know dump the rest of our stuff there. Uh, the beauty of VS Code is right here from the console. I could just say code, which launches VS Code, and I specify the path I want it to initialize with, which is learn console. Press enter, move to another window, and it generates, it comes up straight away. And then we just have to wait a little bit, and then Ionite will kick in and start to generate some bin and OBJ files and Ionite files. But more importantly, you, you will see this uh, F sharp icon. This tells you that Ionite has fully initialized, right? So here we have the program.fs, we have our project structure. This just focuses on the project files, shows us the project references. And, and whatnot is very very helpful um, but for the sake of this debugging what we're going to do is we're going to create another file so to do that we will call this mats.fs right and then we want to reference mats.fs in the CS project right so we'll compile include say mats.fs right so now that we've referenced it, if you come back here, you'll see that mats.fs actually comes before program.fs. So in mats.fs, we're just going to create a new module. I'll just call this one mats. And then in program.fs, we are going to just uh, open mats, right? We're just referencing that uh, module. So now in this module, we're going to create a square function, right? Square of a value right so going to just make it a little bit more contrived a is equal to value right um, let square value be equal to a times a right and then we return square value right? okay and then in our program the CS all we would need to do is after printing would say um, would declare let's say let um, number equal to 10 and then we would say print f print fn you say the square of so we go ahead and call the square function let result be equal to square of number right and then we'll say the, the square of percentage d which is number is percentage d as well so we specify number specify result right and once we have this right we have a simple program right so let's go ahead and, and run the app we could we could run the app in the regular way of just uh, coming here and just saying dotnet run and let's see yeah the square of 10 is 100 fair and simple now let's say there was a bug in this uh, implementation right and i wanted to be able to step through to see what's going on i would just simply click here put a breakpoint and then i would press f5 okay when you press f5 for the very first time it will ask you a few questions what kind of application are you trying to debug we want a donaco application so we select that and then it opens and creates this launch.json very important what it does is it keeps all the launch configurations to be able to um, launch .NET Core apps from inside uh, VS Code. All right, so if you notice it's saying here that you could use IntelliSense to learn more about possible attributes, which is really cool. So to do that, we simply press enter in between the uh, square brackets and we now use control and spacebar. That now brings up IntelliSense, which gives us a bunch of options that we could use for our debugging. But in this case, we just want to launch a .NET Core console app. So we select that, it just generates all this immediately. And it, it asks you, um, what, uh, where's the path to your program? In other words, where's the path to the compiled 
um, application, right? So if you open the bin directory, you can see that it's here under netcore app 2.2 and we have the learn console.dll. So here I would essentially change this to netcore app 2.2 and then change the project name to learn console.dll. Okay. So with this in place, um, I should be able to run the app. However, there is a pre-launch task. What this pre-launch task does is to make sure that we're running the latest version of the code. Whenever you hit F5 next time, what it will do is to first execute the pre-launch task, which is it will run .NET build to make sure that you know everything is up to date before trying to run the app. Um, so right now, if I press F5 again, you will see that we're getting an error. And the reason we're getting an error is because it doesn't know what this build pre-launch task is. So we need to go ahead and configure it. So all just we, we need to do is just click configure task and it asks you um, create a task.json from template. We say yes. And it asks what type of um, task are you looking for, whether it's MS build or .NET Core. So if you're running the old style.NET um, framework applications, then yes, MS build. But in this case, we are using .NET Core. So when we use .NET Core, if you notice, it now has a task.json that has been added as well. And this task.json has the the name of the, the label of the task and the command to execute that task, which is .NET build. All right. So with this in play, we just hit F5 again and we should start debugging. So if we wait a little bit, ha, you see, we've hit the breakpoint already. So this is the debug console, right? It is very useful. What it is, is it freezes the state of the application at this particular line. So when it hits this breakpoint, the application is essentially frozen and then the, you can come here and inspect the state so there are many ways of doing it but you can come here and type commands right and execute the command so if i said two plus two and press enter it will show me four right if i said number plus two it will show me 12 because number was 10. so this is really really helpful you know for quickly evaluating the state of the world and things like that so it's really cool um the next thing we will look at is the variables section so instead of having to type all the uh, variables that are currently in scope you can see all the local variables right here so as you can see we have this argv which is an empty string array and then we have a number which is which has the value of 10 and those locals are showing up here um i even have the ability to change the values here so if i change this to 11 and i came here and repeated number plus two as you can see saying 13. So let's just change it back, make it 10 again, and so on and so forth. It's really helpful. The second thing we could do too is apply what is called a watch. So watch is a way of, um, so if we come here, add to watch, we can watch a particular variable irrespective of, you know, how many method calls we jump to and fro. We would see the value as it keeps changing. That's what a watch does. Um, we don't need this. Then you now have the call stack, which is very important. I'll get to this call stack in a moment. And then finally, you have the breakpoints. Okay. So currently, it's set to, um, it's not set to breakpoint on all exceptions, only user handled exceptions and only the breakpoint is specified in program.cs. This is useful if, for example, the application is throwing an error. I don't know where it's throwing an error from. You can easily come here so that anytime the application throws an error, um, VS Code would in the, the debugger would immediately halt the program at that point where the error was thrown. It's a little bit more advanced, but for now let's just uh, focus on the call stack. So what the call stack is is it shows you the sequence in which functions are called. So for example, we have external code, which is external code obviously, which goes ahead and calls our main um, our main function, which is this main here, and then from the main function, if I step into that's this F11. It now takes me into the square function and as you can see we now have two values in our call stack the first one is the main the second one is the square and inside the square function we can see that this is where we are we can see the locals in that particular um in that particular uh, what they call a function so if i step through you can see that the locals has now introduced a quote 10 and if i step over again you can see square value is now 100 and that's what gets returned. So if I still step over, it brings me back. And finally, I can see that result is also 100 as well, which which tallies with what's here. 
um yeah so that is the call stack and also this also shows you if you have like multiple threads running you can see this call stacks of each of the threads which is really really helpful so um that is how to debug a an f sharp application a, an f sharp console application right this is great um but i want to take it um i want to kick it up a notch and uh, we're going to look at debugging um a web application next so to do that let's close this head over back to our debugging and this time instead of dotnet core new console we would say dotnet core new web api right new web api lang f sharp and the output would be learn api right when i do this it will generate the right uh, uh, code and all that and then when i clear let's go to learn console learn api rather let's open it in code learn api and then it brings us here so this is a web app essentially uh, you have your startup.cs, you have your program.cs. I didn't want to use something more complicated. I wanted something that's as easy as possible to, to grasp. So you have controllers here with our values controller, some properties and, you know, some other complications. Let's just run this to see if it works, right? So if I come here and I launched .NET, .NET run, right? Um, if we wait a little bit, you'll see that the application will start running. The application is running and it's saying it's listening on localhost 5000. So if I click this, if I hold control and click that, it brings us to this page. don't know why it keeps redirecting to the... Oops. Okay, let me see if I can fix this. Um, there should be, yes, HTTPS redirection. Let's comment that out. Let's rerun the app. Okay, so it's running. I click localhost 5000 and let's say API slash values. Okay, good. So as you can see, the app is running and we can see the URL. Uh, just so that it doesn't, you know, get really weird. What I could do is to, um, after app.useMVC, say app.useStartup page. Um, no, app.useStatus code pages. Right, put that before any of this. Okay, so if you don't understand what I'm doing, it's fine. I'm not trying to teach uh, ASP.NET Core yet. Um, I'll have more videos on that, but for now, I just want to be able to debug the app successfully. So, yes, let's go ahead and click this. Good, you can see status code 404 not found. That means the app is running. Uh, the question now is how do we debug this because this is a little bit trickier to debug as we have essentially a lot going on and we need a browser and so on and so forth. Well, believe it or not, it's actually the same process. So we first press F5 and then to, we select .NET Core. We come here, specify instead of .NET Core Console, we would say a .NET, a local .NET Core Web App, right? This is a little bit more involved, but it's still based on the same idea. We come here, we pick uh, Netcore App to 2. Netcore App 2.2. And then for the project name, we still pick the learn api.dll, right? And then, um, but now there are some nice, there are some different things we need to do. So first of all, you have a stop at entry. If true, the debugger should stop at the entry point of the target, which is not what we want. Um, we can also have environment variables. So if we want development or production, or if we have anything we want to configure, we set that here. Then we now have this source file map. 
what this is saying is that every time there is um it's serving from anytime it's serving from this folder okay we don't we don't have a slash views folder but how we did right it's saying anytime somebody tries to to you know reference slash views you know it should um point the source maps to this if you don't understand source maps don't worry about it but if you do then this makes a lot of sense it's useful for debugging static files all right so now that we have this believe it or not it's the same idea as well so we click f5 again click configure task create a task.json.net core essentially the same .NET build as well and then we press f5 one last time but with a twist so what you will notice this time is even though yes we are debugging it goes ahead and launches the um, browser for us which is really useful um, let's uh, stop this yeah so let's go ahead and stop this what we could now do is to put a breakpoint here just like we did in as in a similar fashion to what we did before um, we could just put a breakpoint in our controller so we've put it in this uh, in the get so when we go ahead and run this again f5 yep so it's showing us not found we can say slash api slash values and when we press enter voila we've hit the breakpoint and everything I, I mentioned earlier still applies again you can see the logs coming out from the server you can see the um, locals which is the controller here that's what the disk would be http context you know authentication connection you know all the good stuff so yeah can step over this and just re-render it and then see our output so that's it i hope uh, you find this uh, video useful it took me a long time to actually get myself to use the uh, this debugging features in VS Code because I was just used to Visual Studio proper. But as you can see, it works really well and you could do virtually everything you do with uh, um, Visual Studio with VS Code and Ionite. So I hope this video is useful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and uh, you know share with your friends if you feel like you have coworkers or friends or anyone who's interested in learning F Sharp but is daunted by the tools. You can see the tooling is actually quite simple. So that's it for me. Um, see you next time. Bye.